Zuniga, Executive Director of the Jacksonville Historical Society. This is a show where we celebrate and analyze and discuss Jacksonville history. And on today's show, I have a guest whose name is synonymous with Jacksonville history, and that's Dr. Wayne Wood. I want to welcome Wayne to the show. Hello. Thank you, Emily. It's a pleasure to be on your show again. Thank you. And you're here to talk with me about a very exciting project. And as exciting as the project is, it's very exciting that the Jacksonville Historical Society and you teamed up once again to work on another book. So um, this, of course, the, the Great Fire book and uh, the architecture of Henry John Clutho were two recent books. And of course, your prequel to all those, Jacksonville's Architectural Heritage. And now this fourth book in this wonderful series, as we like to call it. Uh, tell, tell the listeners, the viewers, about this new book, if you would, just for a minute. or in, uh... Well, the Jacksonville Historical Society, as you well know, and most of your viewers do also, has one of the preeminent collections of photographs of Northeast Florida. And uh, although it's not widely known by the public, we have been collecting photographs for 75 years of Jacksonville's history. And uh, by and large, most of these photographs have not been seen by the public. They've been uh, hoarded away for safekeeping in our archives. And so the idea came upon us about five years ago to let's do a book that celebrates this vast photographic heritage that the Historical Society has. Uh, in addition to the Historical Society, there are a number of uh, other archives of Jacksonville and Florida photographs. Uh, there are numerous all around town. And it occurred to us that if we could do a combination of all of the best photographs of Jacksonville and put those in one large format coffee table book so that our citizens could not only see a pictorial history of our city, but see the most beautiful and artistic and classic photographs of Jacksonville ever taken throughout the years. And so this is going to be truly a Jacksonville family photograph album celebrating 150 years of photography in Jacksonville. And, and you're right, heretofore, uh, most people have seen the Jacksonville Historical Society archival photos, perhaps in, a, in their local bank or their community bank or at a restaurant, because uh, some of those people have been savvy enough to come to us and say, gee, we'd like to display some of this, or perhaps if they stroll through our uh, historic center down on the Riverwalk, but that's just a small selection of what's available. And now, because the word has gotten out about your newest book, your latest book, uh, we are just getting inundated with people walking in with the office and more treasures in Jackson, of Jacksonville photography are being discovered on a daily basis. So well, there are really two projects in yeah. one. One is to accomplish a book, but the second is to make people in Jacksonville aware of how precious these photographs are and to conserve them, preserve them, and have them archived in a way that they will be passed on to future generations. So many times a grandparent will die and have a box full of old photographs that the grandchildren will inherit and they will have no idea who these people are or where these places were in the photographs and so they simply throw the photographs away. It happens time and time again. So many great um, photographic images have been lost over the years. And so part of our impetus in doing this book is to publicize the fact that we need to conserve our old photographs and we've encouraged the citizens of this city to come forward, bring us their old family photograph albums that have good quality photographs that we can uh, record these photographs for posterity and include those images either in photograph form or scan form or the actual old photographs to uh, have in the archive for future generations to, to go. And I'd just like to mention to the viewers at the time, you're not only the author of this book and noted local historian and an op optometrist on top of all this is your your full-time job uh, in addition to that you're also a driving force as a member of the board of directors of the Jacksonville Historical Society and we are indeed the group collecting all these photos and then you are authoring this book uh, well j if you will tell us a little bit uh, about early photography and how early will this book begin and you know what are the earliest photos you'll show? Well one of my theories all along throughout my life has been that a camera is like a time machine. A camera can take you back to a time that you can not, not experience any other way to view th things and scenes of the past. And at the same time photographs are not just records of what happened but they're indeed many times works of art and so we're celebrating both of these things in this book. The ph uh, history of photography began in France, and the first uh, true photograph was taken about 1839 by a man named Daguerre. And I have here in my hand a daguerre daguerreotype that is typical of uh, the photos that he took, and we have many of these 
of the city of Jacksonville going back to a very short time after that. Uh, if you figure that photography was invented in 1839, the oldest photo in our collection and in this book is this particular photo, if you can get a close-up of this. This is about 1855, and it is an ambrotype, which is similar to a daguerreotype, of the first mayor of Jacksonville. And so if we're celebrating 150 years of photography, it really begins with this photo, of the fellow who was mayor in 1832. I, I, His name is John Mills. A little earlier. He would actually even earlier, and then he kind of picked up and left town about that time. That's right. That, there you go. There are other developments in photography. Along after the uh, ambrotype and daguerreotype came the tintype. And here I have a specially rare uh, set of tintypes. This is Mr. Lem Turner and his wife, oh. founder of uh, most of the north side of Jacksonville. Just amazing. Another popular form of photography came along was the stereograph. Uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes had a part in uh, inventing these pictures, and you see two photos side by side, and they're viewed with one of these complicated stereo viewers so that your, the viewer would hold these up and look and see a wonderful 3D picture. And one of the curious things about Jacksonville history is most of these photographs I've just shown you don't exist in antique stores. You can't find these anywhere locally. All of these photos went back up north with the tourists that came to Jacksonville in the 1870s and 80s, and so they're now in attics in New Jersey and Connecticut and Michigan, and those grandchildren and great-grandchildren are now finding these photos and putting them on eBay. A tremendous source of oh, getting yeah. some of these old photographs has been through the Internet and being able to bring these pictures back home that have been taken up north for so long. Oh, that's great. But how, I mean, do you have any rough idea how many of those types of photos exist of Jack, the Jacksonville, Florida and area, roughly? Just the stereos alone, mm -hmm. there are probably several thousand of those oh taken by very fine mm -hmm. photographers who had very artistic acumen, and uh, many of them were taken by amateurs. There were devices that even amateurs could take photographs. If photography came to Jacksonville around the 1850s, by the time of the Civil War and afterwards, there were dozens and dozens of photographers who flocked to Jacksonville to make photographs for all of these tourists who were visiting our city uh, up until the late 1880s. Another form of photograph we have a lot of are these photographs which are called cabinet cards, and they were always this, fo always this format, and they were oftentimes portraits, and they were taken by uh, uh, sometimes portrait photographers, sometimes as souvenirs, and we'll often find large albums of these that have just an array of beautiful old photographs oh that are classic images of Jacksonville and the people who lived here. Wonderful things. Another form of photograph that was very popular was the carte de visite, de visite. and these are little small cards that were used like business cards that would have the person's name mm -hmm. on the back and then they would give these out to their friends and relatives, and there are thousands of these scattered around. Another wonderful type of thing we find are just simple snapshots. We've uh, uh, acquired many old home photograph albums like this, and they always have this beautiful gold writing on the front, and these are just snapshots that people took, but some of these old cameras have such excellent quality, these photographs can be copied and blown up to large size and will be some of these featured in our book as well. Now, refresh my memory. Was it not a photograph album, family photograph album, not somewhat unlike that, where the definitive photo for the Great Fire, the one that graced the cover, was That's right. found? There were, there were seven photos in that album, all taken by an unknown photographer, mm -hmm. and we don't know who it was. We know it was all done by the same photographer who probably had a camera much like this that went around and took pictures, and there was a slight light leak in that camera so that they all have that same little mark at the bottom. <laughs> Uh, this camera actually um, was a little bit later than that. This was from uh, 1945. This was my grandfather's camera. These old brownie cameras really got a lot of Americans started in popular photography. But going back to uh, the turn of the century, there were cameras being mass produced for the market. And cameras like this that you see over between us is a big old uh, portrait camera that would be used by some of the tourist photographers who came to our city. So we have lots of different sources of photographs. Uh, we have some just regular 8 by 10s that are taken by modern photographers. Here's a picture of Bob Hope uh, giving his uh, comedy routine out at the Naval Air Station during World War II. We have a picture of the Jacksonville's first Terrific. baseball team. 
and other pictures. We have many pictures taken during the Civil War. Many of these come to mm -hmm. us through the National Archives in Washington, D.C. Here is a, a sentry tower during the Civil War. So we have lots of sources of photographs, lots of different media photographs, including the one behind us, which I especially love, which is a panoramic photo. Panoramic photographs were being taken as early as uh, 1865, and here's one from just after mm -hmm. the Great Fire as Jacksonville was rebuilding, and you see these cameras that were taken with a moving lens. In fact, many of these uh, panoramic photographs have large groups of people, and occasionally you'll see the same person in the picture on the left and also that same person on the right. They would be in the first part of the picture and would quickly run around behind the camera and get on the other side before the camera got to them. And I have a number of panoramic shots with the same person on both sides of the photo. The ultimate prank. There it is. The right. I, prank. I never knew that. Thank you. What a, what a great piece of information. Uh, Goodness, uh, just the and and I think in my job one of the things that I have barely touched on and you have just devoured is is knowing how to find all these photos of Jacksonville, Florida, and certainly if people go on our website, which by the way you created, thank you very much, the Jacksonville Historical Society website, www.jackshistory.com, they'll find dozens and dozens of links to all sorts of places where they can look at many of these photographs and the places that house these photographs and the one repositories. Of, one of the great gifts of this modern electronic age is that so many people have made their photographs available mm -hmm. on the internet and there are many classic collections of photographs which contain pictures of Jacksonville all across the country Everything. and we have accessed those on our website if you go to that and click on the links you can see thousands of photographs uh, from everything from the Library of Congress to the State Archive in Tallahassee, University of Central Florida, University of South Florida uh, and so forth have great pictures of Jacksonville that we hope that will pique people's interest to go out and see just what is out there. But that said there's nothing like holding a wonderful oversized hardback book in your hand and looking at this compilation that you with your artistic eye and your knowledge of Jacksonville history will put together. So maybe give us a sneak peek at, at some point, not necessarily of what's going to be in there, but the types of things that, that might well, be in your We book. set three uh, goals for the photos in this book. And by the way, I've reviewed almost 25,000 images oh. <laughs> over the last six months. And we're probably going to have around 350 photos in the book and we've got to narrow it down <laughs> from all of those. And we, we have uh, probably 3,000 images right now that are just classic that meet our criteria. They must show something of the life and culture of Jacksonville uh, and give a feeling of what life was like at a given time mm -hmm. in that 150 year period. It also must be very high resolution because we're going to blow these pictures up to full page size and it's a large size book. So some of these pictures will be uh, almost uh, 20 inches wide and they have to have good enough detail to do that. Surprisingly, these little stereograms like we showed earlier mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that are barely two inches or three inches square are high resolution enough that they can be blown up to nearly poster size and show the complete detail. So we'll use many of these old sure. pictures from the 1870s mm -hmm. and 80s. But also each picture in this book must be a work of art. There are so many times people take pictures that don't really meet that criteria, but many of them do and many pictures just in family photograph albums that are uh, you know taken on, on in quick succession on a Sunday afternoon a hundred years ago are coming back to be true works of art with showing people their dress their hairstyles the activities they did and this is an important part of our culture in Jacksonville and we want to reflect that so we're going to do uh, um, it's a pretty massive book over 350 pages that will be available just in time for the holiday shopping season. It will be the perfect gift for anybody watching this program and we hope that people will line up to uh, get this new book on Jacksonville's history of photography. And, and I will say right now that'll be available at the Jacksonville Historical Society and people will hear, hear more about that later but that that way they don't have to call me tomorrow to find yeah. out it'll, it'll be closer toward the holidays. 